Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler and I'm an evolutionary astrologer and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 7th and the 14th of July 2018. Boy oh boy have these two weeks been hectic. So much been going on with martial effects in our lives. A lot of people are experiencing individualization processes in different areas of their life, experiencing more aggression either for themselves or from people around them. The greater need to stand on their own or people who feel that way towards them. And just a livelier emotion all around. More vitality, more warmth, more anger, more sexuality. And a lot to do. A stress, a, ses a sense of necessity that... Uh, burdens and creates stress. When we're talking about Mars in Aquarius, the stress is on the nervous system that gets inflamed by that Mars. Anyway, this week is going to be calmer and much more practical. We are having a beautiful water trine already present in the skies between the Sun, Jupiter and Neptune. This is a water trine that is all about exposing my subjective, intimate uh, identity, about broadcasting it out, taking it out from the closet and into the public eye. And it can be a beautiful process too. And I've seen two, two funny posts, one by Maurice Fernandez and one by Sul Johansson, uh, about people exposing their intimate private lives in ways never seen before. Um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. But um, if you think about it, the sun in Cancer is all about our very intimate, very subjective self. Who we are on a, on a most intimate level. An inner level, an emotional level. What provides us with security and a feeling of, of, of closeness and belonging. Jupiter in Scorpio is all about exposing things and taking them out from the darkness into the light and in this way inducing transformation and uh, uh, Neptune in Pisces is all about the world and the public and the fact that we're all the same and going back to basics you know and 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 melting down borders and and uh, and dividing lines and being a little naive about it all. So this is something that could be also therapeutic in our life. It could be very spiritual. It could be very artistic and very creative. As long as we do take it out. As long as we take that cancer out of its shell. <laughs> and don't be too naive about that. Because these exposures will have ripples down the road. The other trine coming in this week is a very practical Earth trine coming in with Venus ingressing into Virgo on the one hand, Saturn in Capricorn, and Uranus in Taurus. So it's all about looking at commodities, materials, uh, anything physical, anything of substance, anything concerning the Taurian Venus of materialism. So it has to do with money, it has to do with resources, it has to do with land and food, it has to do with uh, taking all of these matters as, as well as self-respect and self-value and the value of other things and the value of other people within our relationships and love. Taking all of these subjects and looking at them at a finer scale, so to speak, in a more Virgo way, looking at all the imperfections, working things to be finer and more well-made and more advanced and more cultured. 
bringing them closer to perfection. It's about heightening criticism, and that's why ancient astrologers believed that Venus doesn't feel very well in Virgo, because Venus is all about our satisfaction, both from ourselves, our relationships, our work, our income, our food and drink. And when Venus is in Virgo, she sees all the imperfections, and she sees all the work that needs to be done, all the maintenance that needs to take place. How can you be satisfied when you see all these things? You know, if I would characterize Venus in, in, uh, in Virgo for, to, to being uh, um, a lady of some kind of nationality, I would say she would be either Polish or Austrian or German. <laughs> because things need to be done and if there's no control over things, and if, there's no, if things are not done as they should be done, if they're not done perfectly, there's a great bitterness that can follow. So we all need to watch our criticism, both towards ourselves and other people in this time. But it is really a time that can make us much more practical. And, 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 and Virgo is also about correcting. It's about healing. It's about fixing. What is maintenance? It's about taking the things that we feel are malfunctioning in our lives and bringing them into a healthier condition. Using innovative, out-of-the-box thinking, our higher minds, Uranus, regarding these Turian subjects of money, commodities, sensuality, body, uh, materials, and so on, and value. And on the other end, that Saturn in, in Capricorn reigning above. And that's all about the fact that if we don't learn to do it, there's a lesson coming. There's a verdict coming. It's already there. We understand that maturation and taking responsibility is not an if, it's a when. And as long as that when is postponed, the price is going to be higher. Saturn doesn't give a damn about what we wish or our naivety, our wishful thinking, and, 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 and our positive visualization. It's about what there is, whether we like it or not. And in order to work with it better, we need to learn from our past mistakes and educate ourselves better. And not only that, follow those rules that taught us, uh, that experience taught us. So, Yeah, so basically let's go down to weekdays. Saturday the 7th, it's a fun day. It's a day that we can enjoy ourselves with other people. It's a time that we could be more innovative. Things could be exciting. Allow yourself to be flexible on that day. Allow yourself to enjoy yourselves. Eat and drink are both blessed on that day as there is a trying to Venus at 10.09 a.m. Central European time and a conjuncting to Uranus to be sure to spice things up and bring them into a less ordinary fashion at about a quarter to eight at the evening on Saturday night, Central European time. Just watch not to lose your temper or uh, your patience more than your temper with other people when we have that conjunction. On the 8th, we're having this grand water trine that I've been speaking about. Uh, between Sun, Jupiter, and Neptune. And we're also having a trine between the Moon and uh, Saturn. We're having a square between the Moon and Mars. So what does that mean? It means it's a good day to take things forward on a professional level. It's a good day to take things strategically forward and take responsibility. We just have to watch our temper and not be too aggressive or confrontational. It's a day that our communication can be a little less than perfect. We have to watch our communications closely at that day. And because there's an opposition in the sky between Mercury and Mars, it was exact on Thursday and created a lot of tension and a lot of conflicts. I've got a lot of ricochet from my clients and I had some as well in my life. We're still feeling it and that moon is going to fuel. It's going to T-square these two and it's going to fuel it. Um, so, on the 8th, really watch how you communicate. Uh, there is, could be a lot of honor involved and pride and self-respect. 
and watch not to overindulge, be extravagant, jump too high too fast. It's an opposition to Jupiter and really it's about moderation. It's about being discreet. It's about being tactful. Watch yourselves in these matters, but do allow yourself to enjoy yourselves. Don't be too hard-assed. Um, there's a trine between the Sun and Jupiter on that day as well, so yeah, go wild. Go back to nature. Go back to art. Go back to dancing. Go back to the movies. Go back to just being in your own world and enjoying your own imagination, your own artistic and spiritual endeavors. We're just going outside, you know. Enjoy illusion. Enjoy a little drink. Just don't go too far. <laughs> And there's also a sextile between the sun and the moon. So, yay, enjoy. The ninth, however, as Venus enters Virgo, we are having um, the beginning of that Earth trine. Uh, it's going to be at its height a day later. And it's a day with a lot of inner strength. But again, a need to be discreet, a need to be tactful, we have to see that we that the decisions we make to move forward in life are based on things that are real and substantial realistically not utopically not too optimistically not too naively and that we base our actions and our words on things that can be counted on and trusted we have to be careful not to be too preachy around the ninth also the tenth but and also the eighth but especially around the ninth and on the tenth Jupiter goes direct our expansive processes process of development of bringing in knowledge and wisdom are going to work better our faith in what are we believe in is going to go st grow stronger Chiron is going to Queen Kong's Venus exactly on Tuesday that means that through this week we have to be careful not to cater too much to people around us in our relationships and remain depleted or in some way a martyr and there's the grand earth trine between Saturn Venus and Uranus that I've spoke about before um, very energetic morning on the 10th century European time with a trine to uh, Mars. So a great time to have any physical activity or just a lot of activity going on. The 11th, the moon is going to square Chiron. It's a sensitive day. Be aware of how you handle your own hurts and aches and be careful not to be too sensitive or insensitive to people around you. Um, we could again be feeling uncomfortable or a little edgy on the 11th and maybe too emotional and melodramatic the 12th could be that way as well but it's already a lot better it could be exciting it could be satisfying especially with other people but we have to remember not to be too judgmental um, and Venus is going to try and Uranus it's a great time for renewal and upgrading within our present relationships and for new ones to come in. It's time to take things forward, but as you do so, do so calmly. Don't do so obsessively. Don't do radically. Don't do so dramatically because we're having an exact opposition between the Sun and Pluto on that day. It's going to be exact also the next day with the Moon as we have the solar eclipse. It's an intense time. The highs and lows could be great. Emotional highs and lows. We could become volcanic. We could, see, we could see glimpses of our own shadows coming up to the light. And, you know, I always like to talk about, when we're talking about the sun opposition Pluto transit, when I see it with my clients, I always tell them, listen, it's good to dig. Because digging makes us understand all the hidden protocols that run inside. And actually be aware of them and answer them in a better, more responsible, mature manner. But knowing not to dig too much 
is one of the most important qualities. And I love the fables of J.R.R. Tolkien. In Tolkien's legends, it is said that the dwarves dug the mountains until they dug Moria too deep, freeing shadows and demons that should have been that should have remained dormant in the darkness and in the pits of the earth. And now that they have been freed, they are creating havoc in their life and they need to be dealt with and fought. So diving in too deep can release things that are too dark for us to handle. Or at least if we do handle them, that could be a very transformative experience for us in our lives. We have to be aware when we enter waters that are too deep for our own good and stop, get up from the table and leave and, and process all of that emotional themes a little and know how to regulate it in a way which isn't volcanic in our life, that isn't eruptive in our lives. So, yeah, um, Yeah, and there's a square, there's a, a trine between the moon and Venus and, and uh, Neptune on that day, another water trine, which really softens things down and allows us to feel more secure and intimate. Mercury is going to be at its greatest eastern elongation. That means you can see it beautifully a couple of hours after sunset, as well as Mars, which is exceptionally close, closest has been. Well, it was that close 2013, but before that, for thousands of years, it hasn't been so close. Go outside an hour or two after sunset, look to the eastern sky and see it in all its reddish glory. And if you have a telescope or binoculars, even better. Um, yeah, so just be careful of going too deep or too far and moderate yourself. A little moderation will go a long way. Friday the 13th. Oh. So on Friday the 13th we're having a new moon and a partial solar eclipse that's not going to be visible from a lot of places. Australians and Pacifics, you are going to watch that and it could be visible in the tips of Australia, maybe New Zealand and over the Pacific. And that solar eclipse, even though it's partial, is it's, it's, it's in 20 uh, uh, Cancer, and it's opposing Pluto, which brings it great intensity and a great capability to bring transformations within our lives and understandings within our lives. But these transformations and understandings could be turbulent and volcanic and they could do a lot with things concerning family and mothering, intimacy, belonging, nurturing, and my personal subjective identity, the things that bring me a sense of inner peace and security. Things can change. I can find out things either about myself, people in my life, or just about life itself that can change my perception, my subjective self my viewpoint and how I regard myself as. Um, and on the 14th, we're having a moon trine Chiron. We could work on our uh, sore spots and heal them. Uh, we have to be careful not to be aggressive on that day, especially in the morning as the moon is going to oppose Mars. Don't be too headstrong. Know how to compromise. Venus is going to try and Saturn exactly. And that's a great time to stabilize your relationships and towards an, a, a, days, a few days before that and a few days after that. And bring your relationships into a more mature and responsible and sustainable and stable, respectable and honorable uh, fashion. And again, I want to warn you from exaggerating, being untactful or indiscreet, indulging too far, and you know, eating too much, drinking too much, 
there's a need to feel the richness of life right now. And we could be very impulsive regarding that and not look at the further consequences. So just watch that. And as I said, a little moderation is going to go a long way. I hope you have a wonderful week. And we're opening up a new English class for beginners as well as an intermediate group in evolutionary astrology, you can study with me once a week for an hour and a half through your smartphone or your computer from anywhere around the world. If you're interested in more details, contact me. I want to thank you for commenting, liking, sharing these videos. It's a great way for me to know that you enjoy them and it's a great way for them to get exposed to more people. Every like, every comment exposes this video on Facebook to more people. And, of course, regarding consultations, private lessons, or any question you might have, just free to call or contact me. Boaz Feiler, and I'm signing off. Goodbye.